Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to draw reflections in the water using colored pencils. If you've been following my channel you could see that I did an entire series of videos on landscape in colored pencil and this is going to be the last one. There's going to be eight of them available here on my YouTube channel. On my Patreon there's going to be three more uh, available. Uh, those are going to be about composition, value and textures and finally about materials. So if you're interested in those you should head over to my Patreon. Now let's focus on this one, how to draw reflections in the water. This looks a little bit complex but there are actually ways to simplify it a little bit. So how do you draw reflections? Well basically you have the uh, image above the water, let's say some sort of a mountain or mountains and then uh, and maybe some trees like this and then you have the reflected image below it now uh, you don't really need to worry about the exact details or the exact shapes of the objects above the water you don't have to make the reflection look perfect this is because uh, the image is going to be distorted by the movement of the water and the the water is rarely going to be so still and the lighting conditions are rarely going to be so perfect that you see a perfect reflection of the image. So usually the image is going to appear slightly blurred uh, or smeared because of the movement of the water. And if the movement of the water is a little bit more pronounced, then uh, the image will be even more distorted and sort of broken up like this as if you were drawing this image by wiggling your hand uh, left and right. So how do you really create a reflection that looks realistic and sell it to the viewer? Well, the answer is values. You have to match the values you see above the water, more or less. Because if you see something darker here above the water, the reflection also needs to be a little bit darker. If the object above the water is lighter then the reflected image needs to be a little bit lighter and as long as you stay more or less consistent with that you will end up with something that looks uh, pretty much like a reflection of the image above the water now there are some other details and tricks which I'm going to show you in this video but it pretty much comes to comes down to this so let's start with the first one the first one is going to be the simplest one because I like to start with something simpler and I'm just going to show you more or less how the reflection works. The materials are as in the previous tutorials Faber-Castell Polychromous Colored Pencils on uh, Fabriano Tone Paper primed with some clear gesso. So first I drew a bit of ground. I'm going to add some brownish and some ochre tones to it do a little bit of blending, add a bit of texture nothing fancy and then I'm gonna add a little bit of sky because, because that too will be reflected in the water I just used a light thalo blue for this one I did a little bit of blending with my finger because you can move the pigment uh, with, uh, with your finger on this surface so now I'm going to draw some trees. I drew a vertical line because these are going to be coniferous trees or I don't know, whatever. And then I drew the rest of the canopy using a dark green. A little bit of grass or bushes down below. And then some more trees. So now I'm going to add some shadow areas to those. Add a little bit of texture to them make them look more interesting give them a bit more volume a bit more shadow at the bottom so that they stand out against the ground and now uh, I'm gonna work on the reflection first the sky is also going to be reflected so there's that again a bit of blending and now we're gonna reflect some of the darker objects above the surface of the water. So here is what I do. I just try to match the image above the water in terms of value more or less 
in terms of placement. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as long as it's more or less under it, it should look like a reflection. And of course, I wiggle my hand back and forth a little bit and then smear the, the image down with a little bit. And that kind of looks like a reflection. I can also add some ripples here and there to interrupt the darker surface with some lighter marks, lighter shapes of those ripples. And this is already starting to look like a simple reflection, as you can see. Maybe a touch of darker value, because I want the reflection to be a, just a little bit darker than the image above the water here. Now, we're going to try to add a little bit of variation here, because color is also important. So I'm going to add some trees in some reddish and brownish tones, like you would see in autumn, for example. So I'm going to add a few of those, <coughs> and maybe a few more green ones as well. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want these colors to be reflected in the water as well, and I want to show you that just like you want to match the reflection in terms of the overall values and position, you also want to match the colors more or less to make sure that your uh, reflection looks realistic or that it looks convincing enough, I suppose. So now I'm just going to put in those uh, similar tones, uh, orangey ochre tones, to match the objects above the water. Like I said, this first one is a very simple reflection, and all I'm doing is trying to match the objects above the water in terms of value and color, and just wiggling my hand a little bit to imitate the movement of the water, those small ripples in the water. And as long as I can match these uh, colors and values in terms of position, it's going to be fine. As a final touch, I can add a few more of those lighter ripples to interrupt those darker surfaces with a few lighter marks using a light blue or even a light gray or something like that. And maybe I can add a few more uh, darker touches to the water here just to create some more indications of the, of the movement of the water. So that's the first one. I think it's good enough. Uh, it's very simple and I think uh, you get the point now. But now we're going to move on to something a little bit more complex. So this second one is going to be a full scene, so bear with me because I'm going to need a little bit more time to draw some of the elements of this landscape, the elements which will be reflected in the water. And there's going to be a river here. I've already done many similar landscapes, both in charcoal and in colored pencil. So there's going to be a river and <clears throat> there's going to be some grass and some trees on both sides of the river. I'm going to start with some distant trees and bushes here on the other bank of the river, opposite of us, of our viewpoint. And I started with a dark green again. This is a chromium oxide green or something like that. And I'm just, uh, I just tried to create some uh, shapes of trees. I probably should have put in the sky first because now I'm going to get some mudding around the edges, but that's okay, I'll clean them up a bit later. So now I'm going to draw some sky here. So I'm not getting into the reflections just yet. Like I said, bear with me, I need to draw almost the entire scene. It's going to be a smaller one, like a vignette but I still have to draw a lot of elements and I have to plan my composition so this is almost like a uh, almost like a, an actual full-size drawing just a little bit smaller and a bit simpler uh, I added some lighter color at the bottom near the horizon did a bit of blending again and um, now I'm going to work a little bit more 
on these trees to fix those edges so that they stand out against the sky a bit better. I added some lighter green to that darker green just to muddy the color a little bit to reduce that texture because when you add lighter colors on top of the darker ones that softens the texture a little bit and that's what I want because those are distant objects over there I, I'm going to want more texture on the ones that are closer to us so now here closer to the foreground I suppose this is a mid-ground area I'm going to add a larger tree because this one is much closer to our viewpoint and uh, we'll see about the shape of the water but maybe some of the branches and some parts of this canopy will be reflected in the water as well so I'm drawing a tree here on the left I'm just going to do the same thing that I always do with trees now I'm making some indications of where the tree trunk and the branches are and uh, doing a little bit of blending and then finishing the rest of the canopy with this uh, I, I think it's uh, may green or whatever it is it's a slightly lighter slightly yellowish green but I'm going to be working over it with some darker colors and there's some ground over there under that row of trees in the back and there's some shadow here under this tree but I'm going to um, may interrupt that with some water or some reflections in the water a bit later so now I'm doing the texture of the tree now, like I said it's going to take a while be before we actually get to the reflection but I need to I need to draw something to be reflected in the water so please be patient uh, I mean uh, it's still a tutorial uh, the, the, there are still some interesting things to see here because I am drawing a lam landscape after all it's just that I'm repeating some of the stuff that I talked about in the previous videos when I talked about drawing trees and uh, some other things bushes foliage that I believe was the second video in this series how to draw trees and uh, and bushes you should check that one out as well if you like I think if you like drawing in colored pencil and if you like landscapes you should check out this entire series so now uh, I'm gonna draw a little bit of water here just to give myself an idea where it will start and then I'm drawing some grass a little bit of grass here in the uh, in the mid-ground area this part of the bank is kind of sticking out and then we have uh, the land stretching out towards us just using that same green and adding some touches of some yellowish and brownish tones I added a, a gold yellow and some raw umber and then I'm adding some even darker colors at the uh, at the bottom where there's going to be a little bit more shadow and uh, now I'm starting to draw some reflections finally so I'm going to draw some reflections of these distant trees they're not so distant but they, they are further in the back so those reflections need to be very simple because there's not much to see there I just uh, need to match them in terms of overall color and value and the position of course so that it looks more or less like a reflection I'm gonna finish this part of the scene as well to the left this foreground area by adding some uh, some texture of the grass some indications of some some of these uh, darker clumps of grass adding some other colors for the sake of variety adding a little bit more texture just to make that part of the scene a bit more detailed and a bit more interesting I'm going to work over it with a slightly lighter green to kind of finish it off and make it more uh, look more like actual grass and add a little bit of shadow here and there with a darker green I'm going to draw a little bit more of this water of this river I'm using the same blue that I used uh, for the sky in, and the water in the previous drawing as well 
I'm just going to blend that so now we have the water and I, we have a little bit of reflection I'm going to draw a little bit more of the reflection here so here we can see a little bit of that land that river bank being reflected down so this is already starting to look like an actual river now I added some lighter ripples there now to make things more interesting I'm going to add some clouds in the sky which I didn't have in the first scene in the first drawing but the clouds or the lighter parts of the sky are also going to be reflected so here right in the middle of the scene I have this small cloud and maybe I'm going to draw a few more I'm just going to soften that a little bit and then I'm going to try to draw a reflection of it. The reflection will be less defined in terms of shape and a little bit darker but I still want the viewer to see that there is a lighter part of the river there and that, that this and that they can conclude that this lighter part of the river is a result of the water reflecting those clouds. Okay. So you can see I'm just trying to match the image above the water more or less and as long as it's close it does look like actual water. It's really not that hard. Uh, now I, I'm going to draw some grass here in the foreground just to have some stuff of interest here. and to create a little bit more depth in my scene and now I need to do a little bit more work on the canopies the trees and the bushes on the right so I'm going to draw a lot of foliage here on this side but it's going to be very quick I'm just going to establish this base value this lighter green and then break it up into smaller shapes using darker greens and black for the shadow areas so sort of divide this green mass into smaller trees and bushes and of course divide those individual trees and bushes into uh, segments or clusters of foliage and once I do that I'm gonna have some more objects to reflect in the water um, I'm just trying to interrupt these shapes here and there to make it look like a little bit of the background color of the sky is breaking through, like the canopies are not that thick. And adding more texture to, that, to those canopies to imitate the appearance of foliage as seen from a distance. Most of the, the time I'm just sort of dragging or scribbling with my pencil like that just to add some darker marks on top of the green ones and that produces an interesting texture. This uh, clear gesso produces a lot of texture because it's a rough surface so you can use that to your advantage. That's one of the things I like about clear gesso when drawing landscapes in colored pencil. There's lots of texture and you can always soften that texture uh, by blending uh, if you want something smoother, something that doesn't have as much texture. For example, the water here is going to have a lot less texture and it's going to look smoother but the foliage is going to look uh, like it has a really complex rough texture. So you can control that uh, with the use of blending tools. Now I'm starting to draw reflections of these images on the right and with that we'll finish this second scene. So There's a little bit more work to be done here and I need to try to make sure that this part of the reflection matches the image above the water in terms of value again and in terms of the position so the the shape is not going to be exactly the same because not all of the shape above the water will be visible in the reflection uh, some, of, some of it will be sort of uh, hidden below the, um, the edge of the river bank if you know what I mean but the top part or the top half of that uh, image above the water will be reflected here and it's important that I just keep trying to match the the value the, the values that I see above the water and occasionally I can wiggle my hand to create that distorted image or drag um, the color down with my finger 
smear it down to make it look a bit more blurry like an actual reflection. As a final touch I can add some ripples in the water using a light blue pencil and that will break up the image with some ripples and make it look more interesting. I can add some even lighter ripples here and there uh, with a cool light grey or even a white colored pencil and that really makes the surface of the water appear more realistic. Uh, I'm just going to add a few more clouds here. I want some more lighter elements in that reflection. So let's see what that will look like. I'm just going to add a little bit of white here at the top and then try to make a reflection here. Again, not all of it will be reflected because of the angle uh, at which it is it is being reflected so some of it is going to be kind of hidden but as long as you match the position more or less and the values I think it doesn't have to be perfect in terms of shape and it will still make sense to the viewer just a few darker touches in this reflection where I felt like there was a bit more value and now the second one is done so I hope, I hope you like these first two. Now we're going to do a slightly different one. This is going to be more like a sunset scene. So it's going to be a bit darker with some cooler tones, considerably cooler tones. And I'm also going to try to reflect uh, the image of the setting sun in the water. So we're going to see what that looks like. Uh, I'm going to use some grey stones first for the sky and I'm using warm grey. Warm grey will be more appropriate here because I will be adding some reddish stones or pinkish stones on top of it. Uh, and now I'm starting with some slightly darker and duller reddish stones and then a few touches of these uh, pinkish stones. This is a salmon. So I modified the color a little bit. At the bottom I'm gonna add some darker bluish and purplish stones. I'm gonna blend that because here I don't want texture. So I blended that a bit more thoroughly. Now we're gonna draw the, the light, the, uh, the sun. And it's gonna be surrounded with a little bit of that pinkish reddish color. I first drew it with a lighter pencil and then added a touch of pink to it and around it and just added some lighter clouds which are catching a bit more light from that sunlight. And now um, just a, a little bit more blending at the top where I'm blending sort of by layering pen pencils on top of one another. That also removes the texture when you put lighter pencils on top of the darker ones. And now I'm going to draw some trees here. Those are also going to be reflected in the water. Obviously, when I'm drawing these scenes, in order for me to show you slightly more complex reflections, I need to draw the full scene. So these are not very large scenes, but I, again, I have to ask you to bear with me, because in order to reflect something, to, to have a reflection, I need to draw something that's going to be reflected in the water. So. I'm almost done uh, with the part of the landscape that's going to be above the water. I'm just drawing these uh, trees here and I'm adding some brownish tones to them because I want to stay consistent with the overall color. Of course I added some black at the bottom for the shadows and some uh, brownish and raw umber tones for the river bank here and even a touch of red. I want to make that a little bit darker and give it a little bit more texture because here I do need more texture unlike the sky. On the sky I did more blending and layering to make it smoother because obviously I don't need any illusion or detail there. So now we're going to start drawing the water and then we're going to get to the reflection. So let's see how that's going to go. Uh, again, I'm using a warm grey. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start with that lighter colour. 
and then I'm going to add some uh, darker tones to it. I'm going to add some bluish colors. I'm going to make, make the water look a little bit darker and a little bit different than the sky. Uh, and also another thing that I'm going to do here, which you will see when I start drawing these reflections, is I'm going to do uh, less blending here because uh, here the texture of the paper will actually work for me and the texture of the paper is going to allow me to imitate the ripples in the in the reflected image as you will see so I'm just dragging my pencil back and forth to create that uh, reflected image which is distorted by the movement of the water and here as you can see I did a bit less blending because I want to keep some of that texture that texture is actually helping me uh, convey uh, that uh, ripply surface which suggests the movement of the water and I did add some of those lighter ripples with a light gray. So now I'm going to reflect the sun and it's going to be elongated like this. And it's also going to be like a in interrupted uh, image, interrupted with these uh, ripples in the water. And I added a touch of pink to it as well. And... Um, now it looks like an actual reflection. We have everything we need. I'm just going to modify the colors here and there ever so slightly. But that should pretty much do it. Um, I'm just going to try to modify this reflection a little bit. It needs to be interrupted like this into multiple, uh, broken into multiple shapes. So now they're all done. Uh, once again, I hope that you found uh, these tutorials useful. I hope you like uh, this one with reflections. And if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe and give me a like and comment. If you want to see more content and longer videos, and if you want to see some more videos in this series on landscape tutorials, then you should check out my Patreon. Uh, that will be all for now, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.